Oh, the plot thickens. Someone must be lying. And in a murder mystery like this, someone is always lying. The question is, who? You know, Sergeant, I think we need to interview the maids. Been my experience that the maids always tell the truth. Sir, I, I do have a statement from one of the downstairs maids. She says she actually spoke to Sir Body at 11.30 p.m. on the night of the murder. Says he was on his way to tend to his yellow rattle shaker and would require tea when he returned. She said she has no idea what a yellow rattle shaker is, but she sat and waited and waited for him to ring for his tea. He never did. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, do you want to hear from the upstairs maids or the scullery maids first? Oh, bother. Let's, yeah, let's go ahead and hear from the scullery maids. Yes, sir. Announcing? The scullery maids. <laughs> and we will tell you what we know about them and where they were at the stroke of 12. You got any names? Miss Scarlett. Oh, I heard Miss Scarlett. Miss Scarlett. Okay. Did anyone here see Miss Scarlett? Miss Scarlett. Miss Scarlett. Did anyone here see Miss Scarlett at the stroke of 12? Oh, oh, I can tell you about Miss Scarlett. Before the ball, Sir Body asked me to go back to the dining ballroom after the ball, take down the lights and the rope they was hanging on. Well, when I went and got there, there was Miss Scarlett. She was doing my job. Well, didn't you say something to her, Elvira? No. Why would I do that? She was doing my work for me. But I stayed hidden and I saw her leave at the stroke of 12. Oh! oh. Yes, she had an alibi, an alibi, an alibi. Oh, yes, she had an alibi. It wasn't Miss Scarlett. Another name. Another name. Yes, your clock. Mr. Green? Mr. Green? Mr. Green? Do you know anything about Mr. Green? No, we don't know about Mr. Green. Oh, Professor Plum. Oh, Professor Plum, I know about Professor Plum. Abigail and I were in the hallway, and we were just kind of fooling around, not doing very much of anything, and he walked in from the garage with a wrench in his hand. We was hiding behind the potted plants. Oh, that's right. Winnie and me? We seen Professor Plum just as plain as the nose on your face. He's going down the hallway, heading to the ballroom, right at the stroke of twelve. Oh yes, he has an alibi, an alibi, an alibi. Yes, he has an alibi. It wasn't Professor Plum. What's her name? Mrs. White. Oh, Mrs. White. Mrs. White. Oh, oh, Mrs. White. oh I don't no, know. We don't I know anything about her. Okay. Somebody else. else? Mrs. Peacock. Mrs. Peacock. Oh, okay. I can tell you about Mrs. Peacock. She was the lady with that silly looking dress and that awful hat. Well, I was in the kitchen and I saw Mrs. Peacock cleaning the knives. Now, she didn't see me because I was in the pantry, but I saw her. And, and uh, you saw her too, Molly, didn't you? Yes, I sure did, Hester. I was on my hands and knees scrubbing the floor underneath the kitchen table when she came in. And I just stayed there. And I saw her cut her finger on At a knife. the stroke of 12. Oh! Yes, she yes. has an alibi, an alibi, an alibi. Yes, she has an alibi. It wasn't Mrs. Peacock. Colonel Mustard. Oh, I know her Colonel Mustard. He was in the lounge. 
Um, and I, I was in there, oh, I was emptying the ashtrays, and when I saw him come, I just ducked into the game room. And he passed by, and he picked up a lead pipe to close a window that had blown open. I knew it was 12 o'clock because I heard the clock chime. Oh, yes, yes he, he has, has an alibi, an alibi, an alibi. Yes, he has an alibi. It wasn't Colonel Mustard. Uh, well, I, I, th th I think that's all the suspects. Sing a song of celery made standing in a row. We work in body manner and we are in the know. Now we are not detectives, not qualified to sleuth. But best of luck, we wish you and we hope you find the truth.